May the Spirit of God give us open our understanding, be experienced by all of us, and this truth may be, may be uh, shared. Okay? So those Brother Epi, excuse me. I don't know why I could hardly hear. Let's roll on. Now, for us to understand clearly, to understand the meaning and the purpose of this teaching, about millennium, the 1,000 years that we read in Revelation chapter 20. Uh, to those who just came, I, I will repeat this. This is very exciting. The first three chapters of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, God created everything. And then he, he made man into his image, chapter 2. And then in uh, chapter 3, uh, chapter 2, he made a garden for his creation. He planted a garden for his creation. And um, his children, he, he took care of his children. Um, chapter 3, sin came in and, and destroyed everything. In the last three chapters of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, is the opposite. Satan, sin, and uh, those who don't believe in the gospel will come to an end. Chapter 21, it's not the children of God anymore, but he called them the bride. Look at Revelation chapter 21, verse uh, 2. Revelation chapter 21 verse 2. It says here, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Before his children, now his bride is getting closer. And then in chapter 21 is the restoration of everything that was damaged by, by Satan. Okay, so let's go. So, Tonight, we're going to examine the teaching of the Bible, especially in Revelation chapter 20, in the context of the Day of Atonement. If you were to ask, if you remember our study last two nights, just last night and the other night, what is the purpose of the Day of Atonement when there was already atonement that was done at the cross? The purpose of the Day of Atonement is to let the whole universe who is responsible for sin. Right? So don't be confused with the atonement that Christ accomplished at the cross and the day of atonement. Because in every sin, there are three things. Guilt, punishment, and responsibility. Guilt and punishment was dealt on the cross, but responsibility will be at the millennium. So before the millennium will come, at least the people of God, the children of God, will know what this day of atonement is all about. And we know that it's not Christ, it's not God who is responsible of all this trouble, including this COVID that is happening now. God is not responsible for this. Anything that is, bad thing that is going on around the world that happened before, is happening and will happen, God is not responsible for that. And let me tell you this, while those things are happening, God is with us. Don't get discouraged. God is always with us. He allowed these things to happen for a purpose. So that we will learn to trust Him. When God calls you and you will respond, He will give, He will train you and will put you to a dark room that only you and Him will talk to each other. So it's kind of hard in the flesh, but it's victory in the mind. Okay? So millennium is part of the final judgment sin revealed by the day of atonement. When sin will be totally eradicated and everlasting righteousness will be ushered in. Remember and note this, that God cannot eradicate sin nor usher in everlasting righteousness until all doubts about him and his dealings with sin problem is removed. Because we believe in God, but yet we still have questions in our minds. Okay? So if we're ready for this, let's go ahead. Now, in this study, We will focus, we will turn our attention to the millennium, a thousand years. The doctrine of millennium, when God will remove all doubts from the minds of the saints, those who accepted him, accepted the gospel, about God, about God himself, and his dealings with the sin problem. For Christians, many questions about God's dealing with sin still remain unanswered. When I go to heaven... I will ask him why these things happen. Always 
the main um, question that we have for God that we are preparing, at least a lot of people, when I see God, I will ask this, is always injustice. Yesterday we mentioned about, uh, we touched a little bit about the story of Job. What was Job's problem? Why it happened to him? God allowed Satan to touch him to expose his problem that Job was a perfect man. He was a righteous man, but his righteousness comes from self. And God condemns any good works, any righteousness that is motivated by self. The only righteousness that is accepted to God is Christ's righteousness. So all this will be settled during the 1,000 years or millennium. And our hearts, wow, will be full of praise because now at this time, we will understand everything without any shadow of a doubt. So we will fasten our seatbelts because this is very dangerous if we, will, um, if we will not understand. So it takes the Holy Spirit to guide us and to teach us, which I believe he is in our presence this time. Now, what are the two kinds of resurrection that Jesus was teaching or telling his disciples? Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. Remember, because Christ overcame sin through his resurrection, his glorious resurrection, so both believers and non-believers will have the privilege to be resurrected once again, to see this life again because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But these resurrections will be divided into two. It's called the first and the second resurrection. Let's go to John, whoever can read your Bibles now, if you're ready, John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. Amen. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forward those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Mm -hmm. So how many resurrection Jesus was teaching for? Two resurrections. One is for life and one is eternal death. Goodbye to life forever, damnation. Okay, so you will see in here two resurrections. The Bible speaks of two resurrections. The first one is the resurrection of those who accept the gospel, those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. So the saved. And the second resurrection, the second resurrection is that of the unbelievers, those who willfully, deliberately, and persistently reject the gospel. The Bible calls it the lost. So between these two resurrections is the millennium, the 1,000 years. Okay. Exciting when we study. Anyway, those uh, you will see in the picture, it's just, just a picture, but even you will ask, by the way, how about those babies that they died, they did not hear the gospel. Exactly. The Lord will give their, your children to the mothers, at least in their responsibility of their own personal faith, yeah, the Lord will give it to them. Maybe we can read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, so that we will not have any questions later about this, this death. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, anybody? Or I will read it for your hearing. It says, and this all having obtained a good report. I'm sorry. I was reading 38. 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain better, a better resurrection. So whatever happens in this earthly life that we have torture, whatever way we died, or even those who were martyred before, they will come into the resurrection of life. Because whatever we, we do in this life, this, this body, this life that we have, the bios, will come to an end. 
So two resurrections, resurrection of life and resurrection of damnation. That's why the study of the Bible, the preaching of the gospel is very important so that when people will know this, they will not only be saved, but they will experience the joy of salvation and share it to other people whom the devil is blinding their minds. You know, a, um, misery loves company. The devil doesn't want by himself to be there. So he's deceiving people so that he can bring a lot of people as much as he can. He says that it's like a sense of the sea. But it's like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, Nineveh, different um, situations. Before the judgment, God always gives instructions. So while we are having this COVID situation, the Lord is allowing us to come together, study His Word every night. Praise the Lord for that. So we will be prepared. Preparing is not something that we do. It's preparing our mind to get acquainted of God and His dealings about sin and His righteousness. Okay? Two resurrections. In between is millennium. So this is what we're going to we're going to look about the, the millennium. So now, as the prophecy is being fulfilled or is fulfilling this time, this is the situation. This is just a diagram. And we look at it in Revelation chapter 20. And we're going to look at it in some other verses later. So now we are living in the last days. These are the events. That will be the second coming after this last days. The second coming. The righteous who accepted the Lord and they went to sleep like those who are victims of this uh, COVID. They are resting now. They're sleeping now in the grave. They will be resurrected again. The living saints, God willing, he will, Jesus will come. Those who are alive, if we are still alive, we will be caught up together. So those who died now and we are living and if Jesus comes tonight or tomorrow, they will be resurrected and we who are still alive will be caught up together. We will read some verses later. Now, those who rejected the gospel, they will remain dead in the cemetery or wherever they are. Then, during this first resurrection, the second coming is the beginning of the resurrection. Don't be confused about the, the numbers. The second coming of Jesus Christ is the first resurrection okay now satan will be bound in chain we read it in revelation chapter 20 and then the earth yes yeah, sister so what did you say about what is the first coming and the second coming yeah the first the, the second coming of jesus christ because the first coming is the gospel remember people are celebrating the birth of jesus christ on christmas Oh. that's the first coming that's the holy history of Jesus Christ where he saved, he executed salvation of Jesus Christ we have to be clear on this so he will come again to harvest the gospel those who accepted him will be with him those who rejected him will be resurrected on the second resurrection so uh, you mean to say the coming of Jesus is what you call the first coming or the first resurrection I don't understand. Okay. Fresh resurrection. R write this down. The second coming of Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. resurrection. When the dead in Christ will rise again. The second coming of Christ is the first resurrection. I know this is kind of confusing, but <laughs> we have to be patient with one another as we study his word, right? Mm -hmm. Did you get it, Mr. Toy? Yeah. Excuse me, uh, Pastor Epi. So the yeah. first coming of Jesus Christ is the gospel. The gospel. His, his oh. birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. Oh. That was his first coming. And death. Mm -hmm. And resurrection. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Uh, for, for us to... I said, I thought the first coming of Jesus Christ is... Uh, uh, the first coming of is this when he raised up from the dead that is the first coming but not the bird and everything what do you think his first coming is when he was conceived by a virgin that is called immaculate conception when christ was born when the angel announced to the to the shepherds 
conceived yeah. from the angel. Jesus Christ <laughs> was... Also the first coming, but not the first resurrection. No. The first coming of Jesus Christ is the gospel. Yeah. The life okay. and resurrection. The birth, life, death, and resurrection. That's his first coming. Yes. Okay. There is no I... resurrection in there yet. He executed the salvation for the whole world. Then he went back to heaven after the resurrection. He okay. went back to heaven to defend our case against the accusation of the devil. And then he will come back again. That's the second coming. Get it? Yes. 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 Okay. Then when he comes, we are now living in the last days. He is about to come. So many signs are, are, are being seen in worldwide. So Jesus will come. Then those people who died who are sleeping in the Lord will be resurrected. That's what it calls in Revelation. Blessed are those. Let's read that again. Revelation chapter 20. This is kind of heavy. So let's uh, bear with me and we'll bear with each, uh, each other. As the Spirit leads us. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Anybody? Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall pre shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the landmark of the thousand years is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Can you see it in the in the screen? That's the landmark of his coming of the first resurrection. So what happened to the rapture? What rapture? Secret rapture or um, open rapture. <laughs> open rapture. Okay, open rapture is here. The living saints, can you see my cursor here? Yes, the, big the living saints will be caught up. Let's go to. We have so to. The coming, the second coming of Christ. It should come first or before the um, resurrected body raised up. When uh, we will read it in, we will. Allow the word to explain it to us so that so we will not. So it's because. part of the last day. So, which one will be the first one? The caught up or the dead race? It's the same. Let's read it. Okay. Let's read it first, okay? Let's start in First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. I'm happy if you're asking. I. This is my. This is my hello hello when we eat Filipino food and everybody's having dessert. The hello hello when you're asking question, that's my hello hello. <laughs> if you don't ask, I wonder I wonder if I share the word, but I know it's the Holy Spirit that is teaching us. Okay, <laughs> anybody who wants to read, maybe Sister Toy. I will ask Sister Toy. First Thessalonians 4:17. No, we start from verse 13 to 17. Oh, 13. Yes. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have been fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Hold on, hold on. Do you know this word, fallen asleep, right? These are the believers yes. who died. Fallen. Right. Okay, okay. Verse 4. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Mm -hmm. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel mm -hmm. and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. so and what will happen? And then who we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Mm -hmm. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with this word. So mm -hmm. they're both the same, but the first one to rise up will be the one that's sleeping. Correct. So 
both those who don't who did not die when Jesus comes and those who died when Jesus comes they will be resurrected that is the first resurrection together with the living if in case he comes and we're still alive we will be caught up together so it's not secret it's open excuse me excuse me I yes saw, i saw in the movie they caught up first before that <laughs> yeah don't don't uh, watch those movies about the secret rapture they yeah. were worshiping and then some people just disappear that's not biblical uh, because okay. Can you imagine movie. if you are taking plane, going to the Philippines, and the Lord will rapture the pilot, what will happen to you? Yeah, and everybody will die on the, on the airplane <laughs> because the pilot is gone. Yeah, so that's not... That's, no, not... that's biblical. That's the one I watched last night. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> it's good to... You know what? It's good to see all those things so that we can... The reason why I said to myself, so we're going up to the last day. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just watched it last night. That's the reason why I'm so confused. Yeah. That's why when always the word of God will set us free. Because the word of God is the source of all truth. We may be... I want to talk. Yeah, you go. Go ahead. Happy. Yes? Hi. My Hi. wife is going to say something. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, Sister Floor. Hi, good evening. Hi, Floor. How are you? Flor, I'm Sister right. Toy is here and her sister, Sister Bing. About the, the text that you have read before, the Thessalonians. Uh huh. Okay, I just want to know what verse is it, it, it is. First Thessalonians. No, 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 no. The, the, um, the, the text before that, the one that you've read in, the, in Revelation. Our Revelation chapter 20. Okay, 20. 20, verse 6. 6, okay. Thank you. That's all. Okay, welcome. Okay, Sister Toy, go ahead. Your experience. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, okay. I was watching last night the uh, rapture, and then I, all of a sudden, you revealed to me about this one now. So I said to myself, what is that thing that I was uh, watching last night? It was like caught up in hell, caught up, and then mm -hmm. the, 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 the actor is, well, is one of the pilot, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, he's having a hard no. time to handle the... Oh, when, okay. Mm -hmm. So I was just surprised because it says right here, if the dead rise up first. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, thank you, you Sister Toy. Uh, that's why uh, the purpose of this study is that the Bible is the one that will teach us rather than just an imagination. People want to make money, so they have to make movies according to what they believe. Can you imagine? This is what the Bible is saying, that we commercialize our faith. We have this faith, and then we will make movie or whatever. People will buy it, people will watch, and implanted the, the thoughts in their mind with the wrong teaching. That's why Paul is very clear. What did he say in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13? I don't want you to be ignorant brethren. Wow, that's so heavy. You know why? Because the people of God, we think we know all the Bible. We don't spend time with the Bible. We are preoccupied with the things of this world, what to do, and you know. But so Paul is giving us, giving the Thessalonians a heavy message. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who are dead. And also some people believe, because they, they are being taught, they have been taught that when a person dies, remember the, the cross we studied before, that the Greeks, they believe that we, have, we possess an immortal soul. That when we die, just the body, but our soul will go out and go somewhere else. That, and that's not true because people doesn't know if they are in the grave. So Jesus, when he comes, he said, concerning to them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Don't be like them. Because this is what is the truth. It says in verse 14. For if we believe, always going to the, every time Paul is giving some comfort and truth, always the gospel, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which are asleep in Jesus will God 
bring with him. So God will bring with him. When is that? When he comes in the clouds of glory. How do we know? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, he's talking about those who are living when Jesus comes, and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, we cannot prevent. They will be resurrected. Why? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. This is the second coming. That is the first resurrection. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. So this is not secret rapture. With a shout, with a voice. This is audible. When Jesus comes, everybody will hear. Mm -hmm. Okay? With the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump. So with the shout, with the voice, with the trump oh, of God. And what will happen? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the first, if you can see the cursor here, the first resurrection. The dead in Christ will rise again. The living together, we will be caught up. And verse 17, then which are alive and remain shall be caught up, how? Together. Just like as Christ made us alive together and raised us up together in the resurrection, the same thing that we're going to go to heaven together. With those who died and was resurrected, together with the Lord in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. So Jesus Christ will not come to the earth anymore. He will just be in the clouds. So when people will come, Jesus give us a warning. If they will say, I am Jesus, come here, don't go there. Because Jesus is not coming to earth anymore, only in the air. And so, shall we ever, this is when David says, and I will, I will um, live in the Lord forever. Right? So, okay. praise the Lord. Is this clear to now, now brothers and yes. sisters? Yes, okay. it is clear. Uh, well, I want to add because I read in the book of Matthew. Okay. Not not with John and not with Luke nor Mark. Mm -hmm. It's about the resurrected body during the during the time of Jesus. It's on Matthew twenty seven mm -hmm. verses fifty two to fifty five. Okay. Go ahead. It says right here. I think it was showing to us that the graves were open. I don't mm -hmm. know. It says over here. Let us read Matthew 27, 52 to 55. It says right okay. here, and the graves were opened. No, mm -hmm. here, let me go to 51. Then okay. behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom, mm -hmm. and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Mm -hmm. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had mm -hmm. fallen asleep were raised, mm -hmm. and coming out of the grave, graves after his resurrection mm -hmm. they went in into the holy city and appeared to many mm -hmm. so when the centurion and those with him were who were guarding jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened they feared greatly saying truly this was the son of god mm -hmm. and many women who followed jesus from galilee ministering to him where they're looking on from afar yeah okay so so these people who raised up from the graves they went into the holy city and appeared to many so that means a lot of people saw them okay yeah you know why uh -huh. matthew is writing his book addressing this message to the jews yeah yeah you so were telling yeah, yeah, the theme, the theme, the whole theme of Matthew in the book of Matthew is presenting Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, okay. He has the one who has the control on everything. So when mm -hmm. Jesus Christ died, remember we were talking about the gospel? When oh. Jesus Christ died, we died, sin died, death died. So when Christ died on the cross, what happened to death? They died. So this is just an example that when there is death, when death is dead already, there will be life. Did you see? And you will see Matthew, only in Matthew, he's yeah, using he's... this word, great earthquake. It's not just earthquake, great, because 
earthquake is not a man-made thing. It's always supernatural. So when Christ died, there was a great earthquake. When Christ was resurrected, there was a great earthquake. Who is doing this earthquake? Nobody. So Matthew is presenting that this Jesus, that you don't believe in him, this is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings who has authority in everything. So when Christ gave his life at the cross, those people who were in the grave, they were resurrected. That's the power of God. Amen. Right? And then what did they do? They go to the city to testify his power. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah, it's right here. Matthew is the gospel written by a Jew to the Jews. Correct, yeah. One time we're going to study all these gospels. Thank you, Why? brother. Happy. Yes? <laughs> I'm excited with this. <laughs> I know it's going around, but... Time. Because I was reading this Matthew book and Mark, and I said, mm -hmm. how come this Matthew was... He was yeah. the one writing this oh. thing. Only Matthew is using those only great Matthew. earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only Matthew. Yeah. Okay. Because they have different audience. And one time uh, when we finish this, we get to study the, the four Gospels. And Revelation is the fifth Gospel. A lot of things to study. I hope COVID will be another five years. We're going to study every night. No. Uh, only God knows. <laughs> only God knows. But whatever happens, we are in the hands of God. Amen. That's the truth. Don't take that. Don't let anybody or Satan take that away. God is with us. He will not be with us. He is with us all the time. Mm -hmm. Look at, I, I, I'm going to give you another bonus in Matthew, okay? Who, who knows the verse, uh, Matthew 123? The virgin shall conceive and his name shall be called what? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. What is the meaning of Emmanuel? Yeah, God. God be with God, not, God, not God be with us, but God, God with us. Please read it. We have to make clear. God with us, yes. God with us, not be with us. God, God with us. God it, with us. Yeah. It's called, this is called narrative sandwich. Matthew starts with God with us through Jesus Christ. And he ends up in Matthew chapter 28. Very interesting. <laughs> From now on, you're going to get in love with, with Jesus as you read all this. Why is written there? Okay, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, look at that part. It's not I will. I am with you when until when always always, always. even to the end to the, of the okay. world so from the birth of jesus christ he is with us already and then while he is in heaven through the holy spirit he is with us even to the ends of the world so what are we scared for or about praise god such i thank you sister toy for that anyway so <laughs> Um, do you see now the sequence here? Jesus will return, second coming. That is the first resurrection. The, those who died in Jesus Christ in the faith, they will be resurrected. Together, those who are alive will be caught up together in the air to meet the Lord. Okay? Then those who willfully and deliberately reject the gospel, they will remain sleeping in the grave. Satan will be bound. We read that in Revelation chapter 20. And the earth will have nobody. It's like you see in Manhattan now, or at least two weeks ago. I don't know if, there's, if there are people now in Manhattan or anywhere. Some people are beginning to go out, even if it's still dangerous. But anyway, so the earth will remain desolate. Anyway, the study is getting exciting, but we will pray first at this time. All right.